actually, this paper is not only on, on local museums, but broadly on memory politics and the nationalization of the war in Donbass until 2022. It aims to tackle the question of local identity and its relationship to the national one. My presentation will partly follow up on the ones presented yesterday afternoon on artistic creativity in war, in which some actors were already mentioned, and uh, uh, you will see it. This paper is part of a very long project, I might say a very long story, that began with fieldwork on memory politics of the Second World War, notably the burnt villages added by memory politics of Maidan. My, my aim is to study the dialogue between the nation building th that is orchestrated from above and the one that takes place from below. It is based on interviews in Kyiv, but also our, my field work carried out in the Donbass region between 2015 and 2021, uh, mainly in the cities of uh, Slavyansk and Kramatorsk. Some actors based in Kyiv are participating in the politics of memory in different Ukrainian regions, such as the Institute for National Memory, that proposes mobile and temporary exhibitions that might be installed in public spaces, such as museums, libraries, or public squares, in order to de-Sovietize the eastern regions and to provide a national historical presentation. This is mostly a top-down approach, and you can see on the, uh, on the screen uh, this uh, exhibition on Holodomor in Kramatorsk. Some other initiatives mentioned yesterday uh, from the center are more mindful to local realities. The project Musée Vitkrita na Remont uh, under construction museum open launched by Leonid Marushak mentioned yesterday after Maidan proposed to renovate local museums in order to highlight local specialities, specificities, sorry. Ceramics in Slavyansk, porcelain in Druzhkivka, horse breeding in Bilovolsk. Leonid Marushak has conducted several filed uh, surveys to understand the complexity of the Donbass region and has identified five distinct social, cultural spaces around cities that have potential for cultural development. His works uh, breaks with a simplified presentation of the Donbass as a Russian-speaking industrial region populated by miners and workers. Local activists that have also emerged after Maidan are committed to the cause of democracy, but also to the discovery of local heritage. That's the case in Slavyansk, where a group of activists called Strong Communities, Silni Haramadi, was created in 2014 for carrying out activities aim at better transparency in political decision making and citizens' involvement. In 2018, uh, Evgenia Kalugina, an activist of the group, made public the state of her research on the former and abandoned old town cemetery with tombstone from 1830 and people of various European origins. Her project was to revive it by creating a memorial park called Memory of Generations. This project is one of the multiple initiatives in the region related to the local pre-Soviet heritage, often ignored by citizens and dismissed from the Soviet historiography. I was able to observe some similarities in the city of Mariupol in November 2021, when I attended a historical tour that focused on the personalities of European origins, origin, who at the end of the 19th century had created many infrastructures, such as schools, factories, library, and uh, hotel in the city. In parallel to the historical work, the public space in Donbass tends to be nationalized by the development of identity markers of the nation, such as the national flag, its color, and the national anthem. The proliferation of the flag and its visualization in the public space contributes to create an attachment to the nation among individuals 
as part of what uh, Mikhail Billing describes as banal nationalism or everyday nationalism, which refers to citizens' exposure to or use of national attributes. Over the years, I have noticed how the national flag has proliferated in the city of Kramatorsk, where any form of urban renovation of public space is combined by a focus on the national flag or its colors. Here you have the museum, uh, here, yeah. oh, it's the national, um, uh, on September uh, 2021, on the day of the state flag, a flagpole of 80 meters high presented uh, at the highest uh, in the Donetsk region was inaugurated in the renovated uh, Jubilee Park. Uh, and here, here you have the museum of the, the regional local history with uh, the, the colors also. The flag and the singing of the national anthem are present in various commemorations related to the war in Donbass. Uh, here you have the, the one uh, in uh, Mont, uh, uh, above the Mount uh, Karachun, where an Ukrainian helicopter was shot down in June 2014. And uh, here you have, it was in construction, uh, um, the, a memory square dedicated to the owner, uh, to honor the soldiers who were victims of the shelling of the checkpoint number one, uh, also in June 2014. And this square was built by uh, ordinary uh, citizen, and it's quite a huge place where a lot of volunteers uh, are, are working on. It seems to me that such civic initiatives combined with official ones contribute to the nationalization of public space, but also to the nationalization of the war in Donbass. Both museum and commemorative activities in Kyiv and uh, in other regions contribute also to this process. You probably know uh, the so-called Atom Museum uh, in Dnipro. I have uh, no time to elaborate, but on which I can give more details during the Q&A session. I want also to mention the exhibition, the uh, Ukrainian East, uh, Ukraine Kishid, opened in September 2019 in the lobby of the Museum of History Ukrainian history during the Second World War in Kyiv. Uh, this exhibition presents a chronological account uh, of events uh, that focuses on uh, the various actors involved in the conflict. Volunteers on the ground, soldiers, national, international leaders, and media. And offers descriptions and questions at uh, each uh, stage. These exhibitions aim to produce a narrative that is as inclusive as possible for visitors and differs from the way events uh, are shown in local history museums, where uh, stands or rooms were created to evoke what uh, we uh, usually call there the events in the East or the anti-terrorist operation. In Kramatorsk, an exhibition dedicating to recent events was first installed in the entrance room of the permanent exhibition. In 2019, a room was specially dedicated to it and entitled Contemporary History. This room is located on the first floor of the museum, while the wall uh, permanent exhibition is on the second. And uh, this, uh, this room is proposed to, to the visit on a voluntary basis. There is no written explanation of the war. The two sides wall feature portraits of local civilians and soldiers who died during the occupation or in combat. And the black wall opposite to the front door features photo of the liberation of the city by Ukrainian troops. In Slavyansk, the free stands devoted to the war are arranged in the continuity of the permanent exhibition, uh, which before their installation ended with the Chernobyl accident the last uh, contemporary event, I say. Two are devoted to military activities, and the third presents photos of the occupation of the city, complemented by comments, as well as leaflets and uh, newspapers published by uh, the occupiers. The victims are not stated. Um, so uh, these uh, uh, stands do not include a funerary aspect, unlike the museum in Kramatorsk, 
even though the occupation of Slavyansk was more violent. So in the city of Slavyansk, you have several plagues and monuments dedicated to the victims of the occupation. Uh, but the designers of the exhibition on Atto, who are activists of the group Strong Communities I talked about, uh, seem to have privileged pedagogy, uh, but also the question of loyalty to Ukraine. The memorialization and musification of the war have contributed to the affirmation of a civic identity in Ukraine, insofar uh, as they encourage the inclusion of the Donbass region and the war taking place there in a national narrative, through projects undertaken by actors from the capital. But they also contribute to the nationalization of the regional public space, insofar as allegiance to the nation is established through different items and moments, moments for uh, sharing it. This research deserves to be completed and integrated into a broader perspective related to the full-scale invasion of February 24th. Our hypothesis lies in the fact that the war accelerates and objectifies Ukrainian civic nationalism by encouraging the inclusion of new localities and their inhabitants in a national imaginary. The city of Mariupol has become one of uh, the national emblems of the resistance, but also the Ukrainian martyrology, not only in official speeches, but also in the way in which the inhabitants who have fled to other Ukrainian cities seek uh, to keep the memory of the city alive. In occupied regions such as Kherson and Zaporizhia, residents demonstrated against the occupiers with slogans such as Kherson is Ukraine, Melitopol is Ukraine. Um, and after demonstrations uh, were not allowed, the national resi resistance spreads in the public space leaflets and marks of allegiance uh, to Ukraine. One can assume that uh, more than the classically analyzed identity markers of ethnicity and language. It is those of the lived experience, experiences of the war and its memorialization that are of primary importance. My, arguments, uh, my argument is that the war does not make regional identity disappear, but that it might contribute to associating it in a more obvious way with the national one. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.